الشيخ فزيع السيد الكريم Mashallah, <laughs> what do we have from our SMC family all over the world, Mashallah. Lots of posts, lots of comments, alhamdulillah which address everyone, bless everyone and grant uh, uh, immense himmah that if we all have the zeal in which to to do things, to get noticed. We need a, a s social, what do they call it for dunya? Where they're going to keep a social scale of, of, of what you do. The dunya people will keep to see socially, what are you, who are you, what are your comments, what are your beliefs? But the spiritual one is more important that we're continuously doing and trying to achieve things so that Prophet nazar be upon us, awliyaullah's nazar be upon us. Anyone in difficulty do more khidmat because the khidmat brings a nazar and rahmah. So these are the hikmas and the wisdoms of the life that we lead. So inshaAllah Allah inspire people to, to increase the temperature of their love with their actions and with their deeds inshaAllah. What do we have from uh, online folks? As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Shaykh I was writing down a salawat which when read erases a hundred thousand sins. While writing I felt very agitated so I stopped writing it midway. Was this because my shaitans were burning? Uh, everything, it could be a thousand different things but definitely shaitan was not happy with the energy burning your hand, biting you, trying to attack you, copy pasted it's faster. <laughs> Sometimes when you hold your phone and you make durul sharif of course your hand's going to burn because the shaitans that are managing that device they're not happy with that energy. So this is you know these are from the proofs that uh, the battle of energy is very true and very real. So the durood and the, the salawat upon Prophet is a immensely powerful, immensely powerful. And in our lives accompany those who… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Um, their durood and their majlis is based on ishq and muhabbat, not career oriented. This is not a career, this is a way of life, this is a, a way of love. If somebody come to you and say, I love you. Give me ten dollars, I'll kiss you. What do you call that person? That's not somebody who loves you, they want ten dollars from you. So this love has to have very pure intention that when you love and you love and you love, don't matter they want to sh shower ten thousand dollars upon you, alhamdulillah. But you don't do it for the sake of money. We do what we do for the sake of love, and love of the Divine, love of the presence of Prophet So accompany those whom have that love because they'll teach you how to love with all sincerity and purity inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa According to the understanding that the inside must be changed first so that the outside can change, does salawat change the inside? 
<laughs> yeah, that's the fire that cooks the turkey from the inside. That's why it's, it's more important <clears throat> to fix the inside, fix the character, fix all the inner struggles than being an outward Sufi. Outward Sufi is worthless. They put beads on their neck, they wear their hair long, they look like hippies, they talk cool and they call them hipsters. It's complete waste of time and inside could be very rotten because it's not the way. The way is based on purity inside, that you fought and struggled inside with your akhlaq, your character, your kindness, your love for Prophet as a result of an inner love, an inner correctness, an inner connection and a strong connection with your guide and your shaykh, begin to appear like the one you love and the one you love appears like the one he loves and the one he loves appears like the one he loves and before you know it you're in the image of Muhammadun Rasulullah you just haven't seen it yet. But the one you love if he's really ashiqeen he looks like the one he loves and the one he loves looks like the one he loves and you find that they look like Prophet So this is the, the karamat, this is the miracle, this is the reality of love that you begin to look like who you love, you copy whom you love. <clears throat> you keep the character and the mannerisms of who you love. Then when they see you people should know who you love. If someone sees you and doesn't know who you love you've done something wrong, right? We well, look at a shaykh, if you look at the shaykh you say, don't know who is this guy, he's a motorcycle biker, uh, he's a lumberjack or maybe he's a farmer, maybe he's this or that, no. The shaykh has to look like he has a love for Prophet Not every day this is there something different. Why? Because as he looks to the mirror of that reality, this is the dress of that reality that looks back upon him and that becomes the key of that relationship and that reality. So they carry the reflection of whom they look to, they carry the light of whom they love and look to. And as a result that's the image that you're seeing and then when you take that image and you begin to copy it that is reflecting. So others they don't look like they're the image of Prophet They don't even wear the things that Prophet even spoke of. So then why to follow something like that? And that becomes all of the ways of haqqaiq, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah In your talk previously you told us not to listen to complaints. What if those complaints are about us and our behavior? If you need to listen to other people complaining about you then you need to do your own inventory and write your own character down. You shouldn't have to be told who you are only by other people, oh I didn't know that. But one whom reflects and meditates they should know they're lazy, they're angry, they have all of these different characteristics. We don't need other people to tell us. Or if you do then we're not meditating, we're not contemplating. So the muhasaba is the essential part of the muraqaba, is taking an account of oneself. So that we should be honest and true with ourselves, we know we're tricky, we know we're sneaky, we know we have anger, we know all of these different characteristics, we should have wrote them down first. So when you hear it from other people you say, oh and make astaghfirullah that, Ya Rabbi other people are noticing all my bad characteristics, help me to take them away. 
So this, this is a, a essential part of the tariqah is to take our muhasaba and accounting for ourselves, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah May Allah bless you. Uh, Sayyidi, motivations difficult but discipline is reliable. What's the secret to discipline when time is diluting? Motivation is difficult and discipline is good, easy because discipline is usually the hard. Somebody who's disciplined has a lot of motivation because they have the ability to be disciplined. They wake up a specific time, they do specific things, they have specific regimen and uh, the discipline is the most difficult part. We're talking today and you know when you want to lay concrete you have to put a mold. So you put the f four sides and then you pour the concrete, you wait three days, you take the mold out it's a wall. This is a life of discipline. You want to make a strong wall, build a strong mold of what you have to do every day, every hour, every minute and then you live by that. Your discipline of what you do for your prayers, what you do for your awrads, what you do for your eating, what you do for everything. If you can live by that discipline you should find lots of motivation because you're motivated enough to keep that discipline. But most people have no discipline now. So they think they're concrete, they pour it with no mold and it seems to go all over the place. Then it just become like a rock but it's not a wall. And problem with a rock is it just kind of gets in the way. You can't do anything with a rock, right? But the shaykh can build the entire castle with a wall. If everybody became a wall that goes back to the talk of the ants. Imagine what we would be. Go back now and I'm surprised nobody asks questions about the talks. They come, and come like on a freeway and go 100 miles an hour and then they pass. Allah asked from us, Surat al Kaf, be better than a dog, be more loyal to than a the dog. In the tariqah if you get angry at somebody, don't bite them, then you're not even better than a dog. Then in Surat Al-Nam Allah asks us, oh at least be better than an ant. How come nobody asks any questions about the, the power of ants? The how this ant that has no head, have you seen an ant al shahid The front and the back look the same, you can't tell he's going forward or the ant is going backwards. But how that ants, imagine the, the bodybuilders that look like ants. In this dunya with the big head they're like buffalo. They try to make themselves to be all physically buff and strong. And Allah said, you want to see strength? See this ant, he has a big belly and little tiny legs. Now don't look at the figure of an ant, he's got little tiny legs and he has a big belly. He lifts 300 times his weight. On the power of his legs it can't be. With what power Allah gave this creature because it looks like his legs would collapse if you lift 300 times your weight. Means lifting 600 pounds my legs and knees would collapse. So what is the mu'jizah, what's the miracle of that creature? That he has the ability to call out to his community with no phone but an immense power in his heart and that they live as a community. If they come across water they jump on each other, make a raft and float across the water. If you injure one and he releases a chemical they come from everywhere to retrieve his body. That's why if you kill an ant in your home 5,000 ants will come into your home. You're not supposed to, they release a pheromone which is an emergency call and they all come. Why? To take their dead and to honour their dead. What kind of power is that? What kind of community is that? And Allah says, you're my chosen nation, 
And you're my chosen creation and you can't match even the quality of an ant. So no, we have a lot to develop, we have a lot of realities to achieve. We have to achieve our spiritual connection, we have to achieve our spiritual energies and our realities that they lift with an energy. The bird flies with immense love, not even thinking it's going to die. How the bird and the bird has no brain, they say the bird's head is very tiny but the chest is a big heart. And because his ishq and love for Allah he flies and never thinks he's going to fall. If you had faith like a bird and spiritual power like an ant and loyalty like a dog, imagine what we would be. But instead we're proud to be human and we actually act inhuman to everything and especially to nature. Whom Allah says, it's like you're killing saints, you harm a bird, you hate, you, you, you've, you've harmed a great saint. Sahabi kiram they would take food for birds. In the winter Sayyidina Omar would take the seeds and feed them knowing that their sustenance is going to become short. He took care of the nation of Prophet means because they're the nation, they are the lovers of Allah So means the, the love for creatures but to have a discipline in which to look at what Allah has given to them of power and say, Ya Rabbi at least let me to be better than these creatures because you've chosen us to be the honoured nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Then the first step is at least to acknowledge their power and that these are realities that we should strive for. If we had a heart like the bird we would fly, our souls would be flying everywhere. If your soul flies you can see beyond the physical body because you operate with your soul. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah What is the reality behind having more difficulty as a result of helping a person solve a problem? There's a, a story of a man <coughs> wearing a sarong. Islamic sunnah outfit is one piece of fabric that they wrap around and they roll up is a sarong. He's wearing his sarong, he's out in the jungle and he's grabbed a lion and he's got a lion by two ears and he's wearing a sarong. And he sees somebody walking on a path coming down, he says, oh, 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 akhi, akhi come, come. And the man looks at him, he's got a lion by the ears and his sarong is on. He says, please come, come one second, you hold the lion so I can adjust my sarong so it doesn't fall and I become exposed. The man came, he helped, he grabbed the lion's ears, the man with the sarong ran. <laughs> Means your problems are enough in life. If you want to go out and grab the lion of other people and the difficulties of other people, you're going to be stuck with that creature. Means focus on yourself. Focus on your own life, your own children, your, your loved ones. Why do you want to go out and, and, and deal with things that you don't need to deal with? We described in other talks, when your life becomes good, you're in the tariqah, you're doing your zikrs, you have good manners, it's like a little lifeboat for you and your loved ones, your children and, and significant others. As soon as your life is good everyone wants to jump in your boat. Because their lives are upside down. So that's the time to be cautious is tell people, look here's the video, go watch the shaykh, fix your own boat. But can you jump in mine? No, you're going to pop my boat and my whole family we're going to go down. So this is a real, the energy of people are real, the sicknesses of people are real, the difficulties of people are real. Send them videos but when you want to play shaykh, and you personally get involved, you grab the lion that you may not be able to control, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah 
Is the bringing the throne within a blink of an eye example of teaching of speed of thought? Also, what did Queen Sheba realize when she realized the floor was crystal glass? <coughs> we have talks on the importance of the Sulaiman power, the Sulaimaniya Salam, Sayyidina Sulaiman Salam, and the reality of that heavenly kingdom and the immensity of the power of the heavenly kingdom upon earth. When we understand and study that reality, these are the signs of the heavenly kingdom on this earth and the entry back into the heavenly kingdoms in the world of light. And the shaitans that don't have the heavenly kingdom, they try to imitate and fool their students that they have power from the heavenly kingdom. So those are important understandings to understand why we teach what we teach. So the issue of bringing the throne that Sayyidina Sulaiman wanted to show his power and the might of Allah because they say she has a powerful throne. And the kingdom is Sheba, the queen is Bilgis and she was half jinn and her father was a king who married a jinn, jinn queen from their kingdom. And the issue and the story we've told before of the father had issues with his wife because her jinn reality he couldn't understand or comprehend their world and he went off into the woods in search of her as she left and ran away back into the jinn world. He left the kingdom to Bilgis, so she's half jinn in nature and as a result they built for her a tremendous palace and kingdom and a throne room. Sayyidina Sulaiman was told that her throne is magnificent. So to show Allah's azimat said, we'll bring it here so that she'll bow down to us and understand our authority when you take that throne and bring it there. And the story, this is just the summary that the ifrit, the shaitans that were under his command said, we will bring it but it takes time but Allah didn't want him to use the ifrit. So then these are the two powers that are in dunya now. The freed said, we'll bring it, it takes time but they were going to steal it. And a Prophet of Allah can't steal the property of anyone. But the one whom he had, Asim, As Asim what's the name of the, his learned man, Asim, the learned one of the book of the Torah. He bring it in a, I'll bring it in a blink of an eye and he brought an exact replica of that throne into the palace of Sayyidina Sulaiman So means the reality is that Sayyidina Sulaiman was about to use two powers. One if he had set the precedent of using ifrit then everybody would have been using shayateen and ifrit to do things. But Allah set the precedent for religious reasons and religious ideology is don't go to their power, don't use their power but use your kitab. And if the Torah had that power and the Torah's reality exists within the reality of Holy Qur'an because Holy Qur'an is the power of all powers. So it means anyone whom has knowledge of the book, knowledge of kitabullah then they can move and bring things by the speed of thought. And this is why Allah gives hadith of Qudsi that you do your fad, you come with voluntary worship, what happens? I become your hearing, you hear with seeing, the breath you breathe, the tongue in which you speak, the hands in which you touch, the feet in which you move, then what? You become Rabbaniyoon and you have power of kum fayakum. So means Rabbaniyoon they have been given by Allah power of kum fayakum and this hadith of Qudsi, this is not somebody making up you know whimsical stories. Allah says, for there are servants that have the power of kum fayakum. 
So he's giving this example of the Muhammadan kingdom that the prophets of Bani Israel, look at the power they had but the Muhammadan kingdom something is unimaginable. The authority and the power they had because all of the power of Sayyidina Sulaiman was from a ring. And Prophet gave to all his nation that carry my ring and my sunnah. And when he wants he can make that ring to have more power than the ring of Sayyidina Sulaiman because we're under the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Malikul Mulk, the one whom is all encompassing in authority from Allah Sahal lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard. Allah says, We have given everything to you from the earth all the way into the malakut and anything between them. So, means this shows the immensity of the Muhammadan kingdom by these examples. InshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah In relation of the Muhammadan reality to the reality of the black hole, is entering the Divinely Fire same as approaching the fire of the event horizon? <laughs> yeah, we said that entering into the fire and the zero point energy because they're, they're mixing a, a, I think a talk with something else or, or trying to link it. There's a time in our life to reach the event horizon, to reach zero point energy that you produce more energy than you input into it. Right now you have to put a lot of energy to get some energy. That fire that we talk about and the fire of this Divine in the Presence is to get the heart to be lit because Nabi Musa went into the presence of the fire to take back some fire. So means these ashiqeen with their durood and with their love when they enter into that presence and they have character that clean and persistently good and living a life of service that allows them to sit in that halaqa and the anjuman and the gatherings of ishq and love, Allah lights their heart. When the heart becomes lit and the event horizon is that they made such an istighfar in their life that every cell of their being has asked Allah for forgiveness like the state of death. Because as you leave, you don't leave without a tawbah. Why the pain of death or joyful experience of death? Well because every cell as the soul is leaving every cell of the body has to make a tawbah for what it did on this earth. So either that can be extremely excruciating as you're pulling the soul, so the cell for cell because the soul's energy is now leaving each cell, cell for cell has to make a repentance and a forgiveness by Allah what it did on this earth. If they busy their life with istighfar, busy their life with completely asking, busy their life with their salawat, their zikrs, all their ibadah, all their worshipness, all their maghfirah and, and fasting, everything, then most of this has already been repented. So then their souls become like a hair in ghee that Prophet describes as if Allah takes it like a hair coming out of butter. There's nothing that it had to repent for, all its life it has been repenting. So means this has an immense reality upon individuals. This is the event horizon that when we've made our istighfar, entered into that fire continuously making istighfar, then this soul is coming free from the body. If it becomes free from the body, they hear through the power of their soul, they see through the power of their soul and the energy that coming on to them is immensely powerful from Divinely Presence. They don't have any input into that energy, Allah sends the energy for them. 
And then Prophet described this reality. The first one was Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. If you want to see somebody who mawt qabl al mawt, is Sayyidina Hazrat. Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq Siddiq al Mutlaq The immensity of Sayyidina Abu Bakr's maqam as was what? That he had mawt qabl al mawt. Means the event horizon came, Allah accepted, and as a result, he was operating from his soul's reality, not the body reality and the limitations of the physical body. So, that fire is a fire that has to enter and the tawbah on everything. That's why we entered this fire as Surah Tawbah, right? This is the way into that flame. Twelve months. In Shams al Arafeen, Shams in the fire of the Arafeen. We entered in Baba Tawbah. There's also in Medina Baba Tawbah and also in Mecca Baba Tawbah. Why? Because you come in asking for forgiveness and that everything of you to be halal and that you lay your life for this path, for this way. Ya Rabbi don't let me to leave until I have purified myself. And that's why no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, forgive me and then Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem but Bismillah Allahu Akbar, I came to become zabiya, to become halal for you. Then Allah gives it back in Surat Al-Naml, inna huwa Sulaiman wa inna huwa Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And this now is Allah's gift that you entered in into this way of tawbah, into the way of this fire and this reality of Divine the Presence and begin to dress with the key of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how do we tell the difference between being of service and taking on other people's burdens unnecessarily. Um, being of service is related to the shaykh, not to your friends. How, how is there any confusion? Is to be of service to what the shaykh is doing. Is that we came to a shaykh and we want to live a life of khidmat. I got a, what was a funny email that we, we tried to, to donate, we raised some money, we tried to donate, we tried to donate, oh we couldn't, it didn't work, we gave it to this guy. What, what does that mean? That I don't know what you're doing or what you even tried to do. The, the tariqah comes to teach, we want the attention of the shaykhs, his shaykhs all the way up to Prophet So then they say, come and live a life of khidmat. What khidmat? Contact us that, oh I want for Fatima Zara your organization, I want to give food out, I want to support your charity, I want to support your wells, I want to support the maulids that you did in Pakistan, in India and in Vancouver and we want to be contributors and supporters, that's a life of service. Say in my area I want to give out some food and hamburgers, no problem, put the Fatima Zara shirt, give out some food, take some photos so we can say, oh look. We have this in Singapore, we have this mashallah in, in maybe 20 different countries. People going out and trying to live a life of khidmat in the way of the shaykh, to be under the nazar of the shaykh. And this is the, the beauty of the projects, the uh, translating articles, sending out uh, links. Even the khidmat is take a link, an article and post it, post it, post it so that you spread the teachings. But if somebody comes and you do this favour for me, that's not the khidmat that we're talking about. Because yes, people can become abusive and you're doing a service and things for people that is not related. And they can be, you know, just nonsensical. So there was a long time ago where somebody was come and cook for the zawiyah, cook for the zawiyah. Some one time happened we went somewhere and they were cooking in the person's house. I said, what are you doing cooking in the person's house? Oh you know, they asked me to come and to serve. I said, what? Why would they do that? That's not a service. That's like you know abusing somebody. The person who was trying to cook for the zawiyah events is, that's a khidmat. 
But somebody else tell you, you come and now you have to cook at my house just for the sake of you have to cook at my house, that's abusive. So that's not the way, that's why it's very specific to what the shaykh's programs are, I want to be of service so that I feel it's a part of my community. We said before we have four, five hundred people sending links out every day. Imagine now how many videos are being posted. We put some AI software that you can take a one minute video and it breaks it into 500, 3 or 1 minute videos. You get the AI application, load the video you want, it will produce all these posts for you and put that all over social media and get 10,000 views per video. That's propagation of knowledges. That is a, is, a, is a weapon against shaitan because these truths when they go out they bombard the, the satanic kingdom that wants only to put the nation within darkness. And what the nation needs is the illumination of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad within the hearts of people. So these are noble deeds to propagate and, and spread knowledges. So, so many ways to do a khidmat that uh, no need to deal with friends and, and do things that, that that's not the khidmat we're talking about, wouldn't it? you just try to help a friend. But help the tariqah and your path, don't waste your time on other things, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Please forgive me and my ignorance. Sayyidi, did all the prophets on Sayyidina Muhammad's night journey reach their seven heaven reality maqam al ihsan I can't speak to the prophets of Allah <laughs> but I can tell you they, they completed their deen because the Isra and the importance we say of Isra is that in the Qur'an Allah gives a disclaimer to all who will represent him of nubuwat and risalat that if at any time Sayyidina Muhammad comes in your time, you agree to follow, waqalu bala. Because this is the supreme representation of Allah So then Allah granted Isra because that was predestined, why? So when Prophet appeared at Al-Aqsa, 124,000 Prophets and Messengers of Allah appeared and prayed with Prophet behind their Imam. So he's the Imam of all the Prophets and they prayed the Muhammadan prayer. In Tahiyyat they had to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And Prophet accepted their shahada and granted them Islam and as a result all nations are under the flag of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah They can't be anything other than that because if they say, no, no we follow uh, Sayyidina Isa, well Sayyidina Isa was there and he took his shahada and he prayed with Prophet So when the Prophets entered all their nations automatically are dressed by that. And as a result Allah says, the only deen of Allah is Islam. And that's why in the last days we're seeing what we see. There's no deen left on this earth except Islam. The other one says he's waiting for a human being to be God is a mushrik, it's outside of religion now. The other cousin he's waiting also for a Messiah that will call himself God, that's a mushrik. Great battles have opened upon the earth and its purpose is to take Al-Aqsa. The only reason anything is happening right now on the news is because their Messiah is here and the Messiah has to declare and build the temple. Al-Aqsa has to be taken for them. So these are immensely important days that are opening, all of which are the signs of Qiyamah. So we said before their Messiah has arrived and the Messiah before he can proclaim who he is must have control of the Temple Mount so that they can build their temple. 
The events that are taking place in the news today are calculated events for the purpose of that goal only. So we're living in astonishing times. Day by day you'll open, something new will be happening upon the earth. Only thing important is keep your heart connected with the love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasikoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.